right, I think this is our third work week of working on uh, language mapping in Latin Map 3. Um, last week, we left off right at the order markers 2 module, which is the second to last thing we need to do in Latin Map. Um, just a refresher again, uh, we enter the same first segment um, of the command, which is Java. Oops. All right, so last week we left off with order markers two, right? Um, the first segment is the same, it's java-cp, um, the location of our letmap three bin folder, and then the order markers two command. We could enter that in to get a description of what all of the different options uh, for that are. And after we've um, decided which settings we need, we can run that in the command prompt. And I'll show you what that looks like running it. So today we're going to be working out of this folder. And then let's open it. Did you say you keep a, a folder or a text file for each of the modules? Um, I keep, um, do you mean for the instructions for the modules? Yeah, or do you just keep it all one? I actually like this, let me zoom in. Um, this is like my actual, which that stuff looks confusing. Ignore the stuff below and above this. Um, I keep this, I keep, I just have a text file that is let map okay, instructions. Separate. Um, yeah. okay. And if you're doing something where you were, want to remember what your settings were on that, you can um, make a new, like copy and paste a new line and make the edits uh, and put the date that you were working in. That's something that I did for a while. Uh, just so you can keep straight what settings that you're using um, for a certain map, for example. But the order marker two is what we're working on. So I'm going to put that in a new file just so it looks a little less confusing. Okay. So we have our first part. Um, the map file that we're using is the map file that comes out of the join singles uh, module. So I've put it to the corresponding file name. The data file is still the file.call file that we created using the parent call to module. Um, I like to use the Kosambi mapping function. Uh, that seems to be the best practice. Uh, so I do use Kosambi and I do a one to turn it on. Um, you can see Yeah, it's like use Kosambi and um, use Morgan. Kosambi, Morgan usually inflates um, gaps if there are any. Um, Kosambi is what I used in MapQTL as well. So I've just kept things the same. Let's see. Okay, um, so to turn on the use Kasambi for the Kasambi mapping function. This number merge iterations is pretty important. If you're doing like a final map, you can set it really high um, just to make sure you're getting the best possible marker ordering. For a preliminary map, it's okay to set it to like five um, or 10. That usually still gets a pretty good, pretty good map. Um, if you're at the very initial stages and you still need to remove markers that are sorting to the incorrect group, you can set it to one. Um, and then essentially all you're getting is um, what groups the markers are sorting to and not necessarily a very correct marker order. But the higher you set this number, the longer it takes it to run. So today I'm just gonna set it at one um, so we can run through it pretty quickly. Sex average, you can set it to one um, or zero. If you set it to zero, you'll have separate maternal and paternal maps um, for Norton and Cabernet Sauvignon in this case. Output phased data, um, I put a two so that we can get the phased data out um, in order to use for QTL mapping. 
And then finally, the file that's getting outputted from this module is a, I've named order file.txt. So I can copy this and it should run. Okay, it's telling me you could not find or load main class order markers to. Maybe it's not going to work. This is a different file than a or folder than I usually work out of, so I'll just change it back. And we'll try that again. Yeah. Um, actually, because LUTMAP is designed, like I talked about um, kind of in the beginning, it's designed for Linux, which is a Unix based operating system, and Mac OS is more closely related to Linux um, than Windows is. Um, I think this is slightly different. Yeah, yeah, there's some difference. It's just, I think you're probably a little less likely to get like issues with stuff not being set up right for operating system, which I haven't had any problems with LUTMAP running on Windows, um, but just generally speaking for programs, uh, I think you're less likely to have issues on Mac um, if it's designed for Linux than you would on Windows. Let's see, I'm not sure what I need to enter on here. Oh, okay. Um, I know this line that I copied, it is, it has the location for the lab computers. Um, LUTMAP bin folder, not my computer. Um, that's because I scrolled down on my, I'll just recopy where my bin folder is and run it. And now it should work. So it's loading the files. It tells us some information in the heading. Um, there's 217. Oops. And it scrolls automatically. So I won't be able to show you too much at this point. Um, let me get back up here. What form do you have? You need to find that exactly in my because like my notes um, instructions folder, I have some instructions from when I'm working on my, my own personal computer. Um, and then down farther, I have some instructions from when I was working on the lab computer. Um, and the bin folder location is different on my computer and the lab computer. And so because I had copied the wrong instructions, um, this path folder doesn't exist on my computer and that's not where the bin folder is. So it couldn't find the parent or it couldn't find the order markers to module. Um, and so it wouldn't run. When you get some error message like that, it's usually naming stuff. So the first thing I looked at, I made sure I had my, um, I'll go back to the other. I made sure I had um, the map file and it was named identically how it was in my folder, I, both for the map and the data file. Um, those seemed fine, so I knew it had to be another problem. These settings, it, you'll get a separate error message, um, usually something to affect the effect. Okay, so going back up to what it actually says, the error message was error, could not find or load main cap class order markers to. So either for some reason, the order marker to would have to be gone from the bin folder if your path is correct, or your path is incorrect. Those are pretty much only the two options um, for this error. <clears throat> so it's always important to read, read what it's actually telling you in order to figure out what the problem is. Okay, so going back to the mapping, um, what this is telling us, it, it gives us the header information. So 217 individuals, one family, 354 SNPs, because this is for the ramp seek markers. Um, there's 217 individuals in this genotyping file. All this information looks correct. Coming to this, the number of markers, 212, that's in the first and largest linking group, linkage group. It always starts out. Did you ever do the largest? Oh, yeah. 
Sorry, I forget it looks smaller up there. Um, yeah, it's just hard to see this. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. um, so 200 and, or 112 is the first and the largest linkage group. Uh, and that's what it runs with first. It goes from largest to smallest. Um, and then some of this data scaling stuff has to do with how many markers versus how many individuals you have in your linkage group. Um, if you have more markers than individuals, it will do some scaling in order to calculate stuff um, more appropriately. So it does an initial ordering score, um, and that's the very first initial one. Uh, it, I believe, it looks for the lowest, um, the lowest, or I guess since these are negatives, the highest score um, in order to, no, okay. I, I never keep it straight. It doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to describe it um, a little bit to you guys. It keeps the lowest score um, for the final score. And so, because I only set that number of iterations to one, it just does this one time. If I would set this to 100, it would do um, this segment right here, like 100 uh, separate times. And it calculates a score um, for each of the marker orders it does in that iteration. And then it uses the marker order that has the best, the best score. So you may be the kind of related the p-value, the lower score. I think it's considered a z-score. Um, but yeah, it has to do with the probability of it being the correct marker order um, versus the other ones. So this is a negative. So what you mean is the, the biggest number is more bad chance they will miss. So what I mean is the, the because it's negative. So the mm -hmm. higher negative number, which is more correct. I believe so. It's kind of hard to tell from this data um, since, let me see. Yeah, you're right. Um, usually it'd be easier to deduce that from this if you have more than one iteration because there'll be a bunch of different ones and the final um, score would be different from the iteration score. But it seems like the initial marker ordering is like 33,000 uh, or negative 33,000 and this final score is um, 88, negative 8,800. So the closer to zero, I think the better the better the score is considered. I'm gonna scroll through this. And then this, all of this stuff that looks kind of the same, I'll get back up to the top. Um, it's telling us the number of times that the individual recombines based on um, based on the estimates of this marker ordering. And so it says in our population there's 328 different recombinations across all of the individuals on this would be linkage group one. Um, if we see the number, this number, which is the number of recombinations becoming too high, like six, seven, 10, 11, um, that's higher than is probably likely uh, for a single individual on a single chromosome. Um, and that means there's probably an issue with your marker ordering rather than um, an issue with something else. So that's always a good thing to just kind of look through a little bit. Um, if that happens, then you need to go back to order again, kind of. Yeah, you need to see what the order looks like. Usually when that um, becomes a problem, you can see some pretty apparent um, issues with the physical ver position versus the like genetic position. Um, and if you remove some of those markers, usually it helps. Um, Often, sometimes too, if you're only getting um, one, one parent's segregating markers, um, so not markers that are informative for both parents, if only one is kind of sorting into the linkage group, that can also be a problem. Um, there's not really like a one, one step fix uh, for that, but it's just good something to check um, to know whether it's appropriate to consider this a final map or whether you need to keep um, keep working on refining stuff. So I have a question here. So when you say recombinant, that means uh, is that between two markers do you have a combination? Yeah. Many times. So for say, okay, we look at the two, two, four now. 
which would four. be right here. Yeah, it's two times, right? Mm -hmm. So the reference we we come up for you that two. Um, this doesn't tell us that, but we can look at the phased genotype data afterwards um, and figure that out if you so really want to see that. It's not necessarily just the ranking point. Um, that, this represents a whole. Two, if that we combine between, between, for say, like 224 to 226 or 224 to 223. Oh, um, no, these are the individuals. Right. And so. If we scroll through more, um, we see we get a lot of, let's see. So is that the, is this the model? We'll see, we get, that's a particular marker. We get several sets of these, um, like units of like recombination data. And there's one for every chromosome and every individual. Um, so this, say this is chromosome two. Um, all of this information is, on chromosome two, individual 200 recombines two times on that chromosome. Um, and there's a separate uh, number for all of those different combinations, um, which would why it would be concerning if you're getting like a 10. Um, an individual probably isn't going to re recombine 10 times um, right. on a single chromosome. OK, so that's mostly that data. Um, let me get to the bottom. And it does that for all the markers that? Uh, um, these aren't for each markers. This is just for that, each. You see, that's the that's the plants per se. That's the F one. Okay, I, I got you. That's the plants, right? Yeah, the yeah. the Norton cab number. That's right, the right, individuals. Right. So that didn't tell us because what I'm thinking was, okay, if this is the between markers. Wait a second, that would be wonderful. You can yeah. predict how many recombination in between. You can see because everything, I'll show you when we get to the phase of the data, but because okay. everything's phased, you can tell where the recombination events are, which again, this is like linkage mapping. So there could be like a little bit of discrepancy, um, but for the most part, it seems pretty accurate. So, so well, I'm sorry, keep the, keep the So, no, you're so fine. we know where the recombination occur, thank you for, for mapping the gene, for clone the gene, is, that information is very, very useful. Because mm -hmm. usually we need to do cross um, chromosome walking. We don't even know where to walk, mm -hmm. right? But this one, if you know, oh, you got two. Yeah. You can do That's why a lot of times, you know I mean? and I think, um, I don't know if it was my paper or some other time, but I think Lance Campbell Davidson, he proposed doing like a, a figure that shows like which individuals recombine where um, around oh. your QTL, um, your that QTL kind of region. That information is very, very useful for yeah. the gene. That's what the area I don't want to touch because I'm still thinking everything needs to do chromosome walking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's way too much. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we, we got the marker, right? How far to that point? Mm -hmm. Usually we just keep walking. But this, <clears throat> we get enough from this, you get on the model prediction. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I understand it, that. You get a better sense, uh, but not that. exactly, because you still have to do extreme or two mm -hmm. And realistically, if you're looking at like a certain QTL region, there's probably only like uh, <clears throat> maybe like 10 individuals in the population that are recombining. Uh, somewhat remotely like around that area. And also this information is very important in terms of uh, phenotyping. Because mm -hmm. we know, you know, when we try to map a gene, we're looking for further and like, more recombinants between the markers. Yeah, right? exactly. So usually based on the phenotyping data. So if we already know, hey, here, mm -hmm. I have something recombination occur, that will give us some information. Yeah, yeah. Instead of shooting in the dark, do that. I mean, do a lot of uh, phenotype, mm -hmm. phenotype mm -hmm. simultaneously. But it's okay. Yeah. I that. But that's the nice thing that let map outputs based data, so we can kind of evaluate some of that stuff. Um, okay, I'll go back this to is, this. because you know what my my thinking still kind of not up to date. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more like an old-fashioned thing, how we approach 
this kind of thing, but this is much easier actually, with a with a whole genome sequencing mm -hmm. of animals. Okay. okay, so before there's, there's a face, the output is number is the one, two, that's not a style? Yeah, I'll be talking about that, I think, in about two slides. Um, but it, 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 the genotyping data is presented a little differently than like for JoyMap or MapQTL. Um, okay, so this lab map three, not only for GBS, but also for RepSafe, right? Yeah, it works so, with anything that comes in a VCF file. And then we go for map, go to a CBS. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yep. Okay, so we just ran the order markers too, and the last step is to convert the output from that module um, into a little bit easier to handle format. And we can use that, um, we can do that using uh, a .awk um, file. And this isn't necessarily, this isn't considered a module. Um, it's just more of a script that converts um, the file types that part isn't really important, but because it is a different file type, the instructions are a little different. Uh, instead, we have our beginning segment that's always the same. That is awk um, dash v um, and full data equals one uh, dash f. Then you still need the location of this dot awk um, file, and that will be the same place as your your let map bin folder. Um, but in this, this segment, this, this is like one like unit of text, um, you need to actually put the name of that file. That name is always the same. It's always mapped to genotypes.awk. Um, but this is a little different than the when we use the modules. Next, you'll need to specify which file you want converting, and that was the order file that text. Um, and then the output from this conversion step also needs to be named. So we have caret output dot text. And kind of like I was describing, the bold is always the same, no matter what computer you're working on or the locations of files. Uh, the underlined part is what will be different um, for each computer based on your folders, but it'll always end in the letmap 3 dash bin um, and the different file names. So doing that in the terminal, oh, that's, that is the right one. I will go back to my instructions. Um, so this is just exactly the same as what I showed you. I'll copy it and paste it. Oh, that's the same problem. I need to fix my path. Okay, what am I doing wrong? Let map. I'll copy it from my original. That should work better. Okay. So that doesn't give us any instructions because it's just doing, uh, or any details because it's just doing a conversion. Uh, but we will have an additional file when we go to the folder that we were working in. Okay, so just to briefly run through one more time what files come out of the LetMap3 before we get into looking at what these files actually look like. Um, the parent call to uh, in, this, in this example, and I, I don't change my file names between all of the runs. And honestly, it would probably be easier if whenever any of you guys run it, if you keep these file names um, the same as well. Uh, so the parent call to outputs a file.call file. Uh, separate chromosomes to outputs a file underscore map.txt file. Join singles to all is map underscore js file.txt. Order markers to is order file.txt and the map to genotype.awk is an output.txt. 
So describing these files, the file.call that comes out of parent call two, it contains uh, the pedigree information and the genotype information. Since at that step, we were inputting the pedigree file and the VCF file. It doesn't contain any marker names. It only uses the physical positions and the absence of marker names is common across all of the modules. So we'll actually have to go back in and change those back um, at the last step. Uh, but we'll look at that when we look at the output uh, .txt file. The order markers is what is really important. Um, this is what all of the modules is referencing um, in the subsequent files instead of the actual marker names. So the parent call to, let me open it like so. I will open the parent call to output file. We are in some action. And that is a call file. So this file right here. I'll zoom in. This is what it looks like, which is not very readable. Essentially, um, it has the it looks a lot like on the top the pedigree file. So we have chromosome positions, our population name, the individual names, um, the two parents on the two next lines. Uh, which one is the female and which one is the male, um, and the sex of the population, which we put a zero since it doesn't matter. Um, and then going down, uh, the genotyping information has been formatted uh, to match the pedigree. So the first two columns are the chromosome and the physical position of the various markers. Uh, and then the subsequent columns has the genotyping information for each of the individuals. So like this column has all of the Norton genotypes. This one has all of the Cabernet Sauvignon. This is, I believe, individual number one in our population uh, and so on and so forth. I wouldn't be able to describe um, what these numbers exactly indicate. It it's the genotype for that marker, um, but in a format that LetMap3 can use. I would, don't ever make changes to this folder uh, or this file because it will alter what information is available for the subsequent um, modules. Additionally, at the top, it's nice. LetMap3 puts in what your instructions were for that, um, that file. So if you ever can't remember what the files are named or um, which versions of the VCF files or pedigrees that you used, that stuff is up here. Uh, it's exactly what we inputted. So Java, parent call two, uh, the VCF file was ramp seek cold hardy version one, um, the pedigree.txt, we put in some different instructions as well. Um, any questions about this file? Uh, yeah, um, and I'll show you how we use this file in just after we cover a few of the other ones. This is just the output file from the parent call to. This is what file gets outputted from parent call to. It's not anything, this data doesn't get used directly um, for the map. Like manipulate for the, for us formatting the map file, um, except for referencing the marker order. I'll open the next files. The separate to chromosomes and join single files look the same. Um, we don't need them. We don't need any of the data really from that. It's just used for the actual mapping because all it represents, it references that parent call to file. Um, from, this is the output from the join singles to all the join singles to all and the separate to chromosomes, these files look the same um, inside. It's just assigning which group um, each marker belongs to. So it is again referencing the file.call uh, file from parent call two. So the first two markers in that marker order belong on like a group 12. Um, all of these then go to five. 
this would be the break probably between um, linked groups, and it just has which group um, each marketer belongs to. So you mean from the parent call output, the colony should be equivalent to them? Yes, it is referencing that order, um, okay. and it doesn't carry over all of the information. So everything going to, to be pair over. Yeah, if you lined everything up, it should all um, correspond. So that's that by those two files. Um, I'll show you the. So all the output file in the text file or? They're all text files. The file.call file is technically a .call file. You can open it in a text file, um, but everything else is a text file. They're all uh, tab delimited, I think, though, so you can open them in Excel. The call, call one also is a text file or is not? Technically, the file extension is dot .call. Uh -huh. You can open it as a text file, like in a text okay. editor. Uh, it yeah, I had I just opened it in Excel. That's um, they also see. open it. Yeah, they would, they would say this another. They're all tab delimited, so we can open them. Um, in Excel using Excel's like delimination detection stuff. Uh, okay, I'm trying to open the order file. I don't think that one's going to go to a different folder. Order file. Okay. Oops. Need to close that. There, there's instructions um, and stuff in the what's it called LUTMAP3 website. Okay, I am opening the order file. Give me just a second. Okay, so this is the order file again. It Did you get oh, sorry. Thank you. There you go. It once again has header information um, about what our instructions were, and it separates the linkage groups um, with a header before each one. Um, so this is which this isn't chromosome one. It's just the largest linkage group, which it labels as linkage group one. Um, and its ordering likelihood was this number that we looked at uh, in the terminal. And then as we go down, oops, that's way too big. As we go down, we have numbers instead of marker names. Um, and that is referencing the position of this marker in the file or file.call file. Um, so if the number is a not a marker name. No, that's um so this number, like 936, if, okay, I'm just gonna do it because that's the next thing actually. Um, after I'm describing, after I describe these columns, this is the number, so this is the position in the file.call file. And um, Yeah, 936. And then the next two columns are, if we would have done not sex averaged for the maps, these numbers would be different. But since we put in a one for sex averaged, they're the same for the male position and the female position. Um, I don't think these should actually be separated. Uh, and that's another reason why I don't like to use the order file directly. If you just want the map positions, you can use this file versus the next file. Um, but all of this genotyping data is hard to separate since it's just all in one line um, and you have to separate it according to individuals. But that's what that conversion.awk script did. Okay, so this file will look very similar to the next file, which is the output file. Open 
Okay, so I'll zoom in. This is the output file, and as you can, one maybe the one in. That's the order file. It comes out of the order markers too. Um, this is essentially the exact same data. It's just reformatted it a little bit so it's easier to read. So this is the final output file. Um, I use the genotypes from this file and I use the marker uh, or the map positions from this file, which this doesn't look exactly right. I might have to open a different one, but I can describe this. Um, preliminarily. So the top of it looks similar to the pedigree file, except it's filled in with kind of like placeholder information. It isn't actually the information from our um, population. If we would go back to our pedigree file, we would be able to fill in this information. So parent one and parent two would be the same. Um, and then the individual order in our pedigree file would be uh, would correspond to this C1 through C217 or whatever number it was. Um, once again, these marker orders um, are referencing the file.call file. Um, this is chromosome, which that's what I was saying. I probably need to open a different one because I don't think this file is correct since it's all, it's all zeros. Um, and then the male and female physical posi or mapping positions. And then all of this one and two, 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 one, one information, those are all the genotypes. Um, and I'll describe those after we get through how to reorder, um, how to re-label the map with the marker names. So you mean a female and a male that is a centimorgans? That's in centimorgans, yeah. This is the map that we use um, as the linkage map for PCL mapping. I'm going to open back up the PowerPoint and describe very briefly. I think we went through all of this stuff pretty much. Um, the separate to chromosomes and joint to singles modules, those are just intermediate files. We don't need to use them in any capacity for reformatting our maps. Um, the order files, um, we described that. And then, okay, the output.txt, that was the file that we were just looking at that has the pedigree information on the top and then all the genotyping and map stuff uh, below that. So for the order file, we have to um, relabel what the actual marker names are. Uh, and that is by referencing the position in the file.call order. And then just to describe the genotyping data a little bit, um, right now, we'll talk about it more in a second. Um, like I was showing you, it's all ones and twos, twos and ones, one, one, two, two. Uh, and that's because LetMap 3 assigns the two parents. So in like join map format, the parents would be AB cross CD. So Norton would have the genotype AB, Cabernet Sauvignon would have the genotype CD, and all of the progeny are all of the different uh, combinations of that. In LetMap3, however, it uses uh, one, two, and one, two for the two parents. But everything is phased so we can keep stuff separately. Um, the reason why the two parents are one, two, one, two is because the one digit always comes from the male parent and the two digit always comes from the female parent. So Norton has a female and a male parent. Um, which we don't know what their actual genotypes are. So it's just one and two. Uh, similarly, Cabernet Sauvignon will have a male parent and a female parent that it inherits alleles from, um, and that's also one and two. When we get into the progeny, um, if we think about it in terms of like AC, um, A and C are the first alleles in this phased ordering. Um, and so we would use the first alleles um, in this order from the parents as well. So this position, the first digit, always comes um, from the, the first parent. So the AB um, is always in the first position. The CD is always in the second position. So in this case, it's a one. Um, and a one is the first allele from the second parent. Um, and that would correspond to a C. Uh, similarly, if we look at the other genotypes, 
for example, this one would always correspond to the first parent, um, or this position always corresponds to the first parent. The one corresponds to the first allele. The second position corresponds to the second parent. Um, and since at this position it's a two, we would know that the second allele from the second parent um, is the genotype, and that would be a D. Uh, similarly, two one would correspond to BC, since if we look at this one, two would be a B, um, one would be a C. Two two is BD, just for the exact same reasons. Um, one two is a B, one two is a D. Do you guys have questions on how those genotypes are similar to the other ones? Um, okay, we will get into actually renaming the markers then. And so just to briefly describe what I'm going to do, usually what happens um, is you can open up the order, um, order the output.txt file um, and the file.call file um, in Excel in order to relabel these. And then I use some different functions to match up the information. So within the file.call file, I'll um, join the language group and position information in order to be able to uh, reference both of those two different types of information. And I'll combine them using a concatenate function in Excel. Then once the linkage group and position have been um, concatenated, we can use v look, the function vlookup to match the number um, in the output.txt file to the correct marker in the file.call file. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me close a couple of these. OK, so this is an output file. We have our marker positions. Let me open up the file.call file. Files open. Okay. Okay, output file and file.call. We'll open those two. Okay, so we have, this is the order file. I'm going to add in a column couple columns. Um, and like I was talking about, I want to be able to reference both the chromosome and the position uh, and sort of them separately. So I'm going to use a concatenate function. Uh, I want first the chromosome, then I'll do an underscore to separate them, and then I want the physical position. And all that's doing is combining it so we can read it together in one column versus two uh, and then it's pretty easy to read. And so if I'll, I'll fill that down um, and we get the same information, like this marker becomes one underscore nine, three, four, four, six. Uh, and the same is the case for all of the other ones. I'll fill that 
for all of the markers. And then since this is a function right now, if we look up in the, the bar, sorry, it's hard to see, um, but that's still a function. We wanna keep it as just plain text. So I'm gonna copy, um, I'll go back up to the top. I'm gonna move it over and paste as value. That gets rid of the function and just saves it as the plain the plain text. So yeah. now- You have to paste value. Yeah, okay. you go up to the paste, and then paste values, and it's this first one. It is labeled with value. Sorry if that's hard to see. So they don't change anymore. Um, and it won't change anymore. Before, if like I would try to move this down, it would just give me the information to the next one. It wouldn't preserve um, that actual cell. But now I can delete it, and this stays just fine. And then once again, in the file.call file, we're referencing the marker order. So I'm gonna give, oops, I'm gonna give these an order. So I'm just gonna name, number it. Huh? No, 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 that's okay. Okay, I'm just gonna number it um, one through however many numbers there are. So we have a full, a full list. Now Excel has some pretty nice functions. If you're if you're scared of R, um, you can still do a lot in Excel. So now we have all of those. I told you, everything is the easiest step, but he like. So that's why you need to choose the right one. Yep. Um, okay, so now we have the list of the marker um, information plus its order, and we're going to copy that information from the file.call. Actually, just a second. I'm getting ahead of myself. I need to make a couple of columns in this file so we have somewhere to put that information. But I'll copy the marker the pseudo names, so to speak. They're not actually the names, um, they're just the physical positions. And the little copy. Okay. And I'll put that in here. And then what I want to do is this marker is marker number 936 in this list. Uh, so I want to find or look up which marker that is. I can do that using that VLOOKUP um, function. Now, once again, in Excel, if you're entering this stuff, it gives you hints about what information you need to enter. Um, so once it gives us a description, sorry, again, that's really small, I'll read it. It says, look for value in leftmost column of the table and returns value in same row from a different column which you specify. Um, and after we put a parenthesis in, we want our lookup value, and that is the D7, that 936. We need which columns we'll be looking in. So that's these two, the A and B, um, and I'll select those all the way down. Column index number, that'll be a two because we want to call out the information from the second column. Uh, and range lookup will leave it. So when you, do you have your dollar for the first sale? That's what I'm we have to getting to. I will finish. Um, there's one more command. We need a range lookup. And basically uh, that's, how how exactly it's going to match, and we want it true because we want an exact match, not an approximate match. So you, so we've you entered. Look up the D seven, and then make sure that. Eight, yeah, eight, we're going to look up where nine hundred thirty six is in this array. So the whole like all of these. So A B not only A right? It should be A B because we need an array including B. But we need A and B, B because we're looking it up in the leftmost column and it will be calling out the information from the second column since we specified a two, uh, and that would be this column. 
And like you were getting to, we'll need to put um, some dollar signs in. So it, the, I'll show you what, how it moves. I think it moves in this one. Let me see. Okay. So like this first one was A7 through B1330. The next one, since I didn't put the dollar signs in, since when we fill it down, it's referencing the ones next to it. Like it shifts down each column to reference the line that corresponds with it. It does the same thing with the array. So we can see on this third line, it's referencing the 938 like we want to, but it's also shifted down um, the range that we're looking in. And we don't want that. How you can fix that is you can put dollar signs in between the letters and numbers in your array. So it's dollar sign A, dollar sign seven, uh, colon, dollar sign B, dollar sign 1,330. And if we do that, the numbers don't shift when we fill it down. So this one has this array starting at the first, the first row. Um, and this one stays there, even though we're shifting the row down a little bit. And I'll just fill that down for all of them. Okay, and so we're seeing that like all of these threes are next to each other, which looks good because we would expect all of, I'll make this larger. We would expect all of the markers from the same chromosome would end up on the same linkage group. Um, and at this position right here, we can see we go from 16 onto three. And we also have a jump from the end of one linkage group um, with a 64 centimorgans, and we jump to a zero, and that would indicate the next uh, linkage group, which looks accurate since we're, let me add another column in here so we can separate that stuff, which looks right. Um, if we would see something, something like if this 16 was actually at the start and that's what I was talking about. It's not gonna let me just copy the data um, since it's a function right now. Uh, but if this 16, if this was a zero, um, that's not good, right? we would expect something had gone wrong probably in our numbering um, because it should probably be shifted up instead of where it actually is. We scroll through this a little bit. Uh, we can check some of the other ones. So. 16 to 15 right here looks good again. We go from the end of one to the beginning of another. One way we just can verify the output file. Yep. Uh, um, and what I do then usually is we want to get rid of that function stuff and just have it as plain text. So I'm going to copy this, go back up to the top. Um, I'll paste it next to it as plain text values. Now we can delete that column. Um, and now we have all the marker positions. And what we can actually do um, is delete this information that we copied from the file.call. Um, and put this information actually into the map file. Um, and so now we have at least- Wait, So you copy and delete the map file then? Oh, because it's exactly- Yeah, so these are, we're one step away from having the actual marker names. Um, right now we have the physical positions and these are the physical positions of the markers that occur at the, these positions in the linkage map. Now that we have that information, we'll need to open up the hat map file. So we have, because that's the file that contains um, the information, both the marker names and their physical positions. So have the hat map file is from the, okay. we don't yeah. have it from the, oh. I'm saying hat map instead of VCF because VCF is hard to open and use. Yeah. Um, so 
I always have identical VCF and HatMap files. They have the same exact version. Um, I just save both file types so that I can actually access the data that's in the VCF file. So that's all in the format thing, so you save one copy? Yep, I save one copy as a HatMap and one copy as a VCF. And we're going to open up the HatMap because it has the same exact data as the VCF. It's just in a format that we can use a little bit easier. So once again, this is the hat map. We are interested in just the marker names and the chromosome and position. But similarly to the file.call file, it has the chromosome and physical position separately, but it's hard to use these separately. So we're gonna concatenate them. Um, so it's just in one column. And I'm gonna do that the exact same way, concat, chromosome, underscore, physical position. And I'll fill that all the way down. Oops, a few more. I'm gonna copy that and paste it as the values so we get the plain text instead of the function. And then I can copy the physical position and the marker name um, out of the hat map file and paste it just the same way we did with the file call file in here and do the exact same steps. Um, because now instead of referencing the marker order, we're referencing the physical position as that concatenated information. So I'll use VLOOKUP again. We'll look up D7, because that's our first name, and we'll want to look up in these two columns. All the way down is our array. Um, we'll want to call out the information from problem two and get an exact match from our information. And I'll put those dollar signs back in. Okay. So now we can see which for ramp seek, this is very, this does not look right. B7, A7, 14. Okay, so since it's ramp seek, the ramp seek names are based on their physical positions. So this information is pretty identical. Um, when we do GBS plus SSR, SSR obviously have names that don't have anything to do with their physical position, which is why it's important to copy over the names. Um, but right now I'm noticing that there's probably an issue with this because we're seeing that this 14 underscore 257160 is calling out something on chromosome one. Um, so that doesn't look correct. Um, and I'm trying to see if there's a reason why that would be. We're looking at 14. There, two, four. Let's see, I'm going to, I'm going to look for all the instances of this in this file. So the first one's here, second one's here, one, two, four. That is interesting okay um i'm not 100 percent sure what's going on with this okay 
Okay, so one of the reasons um, why it looks a little funny is because in this ramp seek data, it's actually the, the name doesn't correspond exactly to the physical position it looks like. Um, so for example, at this ramp seek marker, um, it ends in a 44 or a 944, um, but the physical position in this file ends in a 765. Uh, that's probably just discrepancies between the beginning and the end um, of the marker or is something to do with because these actually represent like different segments. Um, but did you have this, uh, did you have this happen before? Um, and the thing is, I actually, I don't actually usually go through and do this manually in Excel like this, because I have an R script that I use. Um, let me open back up the output. Um, this is the final step, you just try to verify the marker order. In order, like I keep the marker names in the map file uh, because it's important to know which markers that we're looking at uh, when we go into QTL mapping. And so I always copy over the marker names. So um, this happened that way. Oh, it usually works like this. I think, let me, we can also do, we can also use the match um, function to resort this file. So we're, I'll try this. We'll do match this 14 um, in this array. We're setting it up exactly this, pretty much exactly the same way as we did the VLOOKUP, um, which that looks correct, 936. That's the number that we had previously. Uh, I'll put those dollar signs in so it doesn't shift. I'll fill it down. Copy, paste its value so it doesn't change. Um, and we keep it as plain text. And now we can sort these three columns. Sort and filter. We want a custom sort. We want to sort based on our numbered order that we had. So that's column C. And that looks. Um, and we, I don't know if I opened up the right. Oh, I think I opened up the wrong hat map file. Um, so I'm pretty sure the output file that I'm working at is my version one, and this is my version two. Um, I and think you we're. So when you do the make uh, match sorting theoretically, it should be matched. Yeah. Be matched, right? I'm not hundred percent sure what's. Because the output file is the problem right now. Um, I'll figure it out. I think we're about at time anyway. So I'll sort out what's going on here um, and report back next week. So most likely the main file uses different copies. Right? Yeah, I think I have different copies. So for instance, like the marker ordering, if you have markers that are missing in your array that are present in your map, uh -huh. um, it won't be able to like put those back into the array. So it would just order um, the information. Do I have a zero in there? It could be that this is actually marker number five and this is marker number nine. Um, but since markers one through four and seven and eight are missing, um, we just start out with five instead of one. So it could be the number didn't match. Yeah, and that's what I was saying, the discrepancy between the map file and the pat map file um, could be part of that. But I'll, I'll figure out what's going on. Um, this is the way that you should be able to do it. Um, usually you won't have um, the same issues. You say you use R script to do this, which one's well, there's, a, I guess, a payoff between easier and faster. Uh, oh, oh, the R script, easier and faster. Like all of that stuff, this is my R script. Sorry, it's small. Um, I'll just show you briefly. 
the this is my R script. I was working in this folder yesterday. It has all of my information. Um, it's going to import the VCF. I just highlight it all. So it's starting out at that order or output.txt file. It doesn't have any of the marker names. I'll run it. Um, it's going to take a second. It's running down here. It's outputting the files with the marker names. It's reformatting the let map um, allele information to a format that RQTL didn't accept. And it just wrote a physical, it just wrote a physical map, and I get a plot of the physical cross. That's so you use it's way faster and easier. If I had this. 10 to 20 hours yeah. to invest, it'd be better to invest in R. Well, that's kind of what I was saying. If you guys keep the names all the same, like you can I Leeling has a script, you could use it too. Um, but it's good to understand what it's doing yeah. behind the scenes. Um, and then for some reason it doesn't work, you can still go back and do it manually. If you're one gene different, it almost go, then you can read it from yeah. you So, but I think it's still a bit relative. You have some way, but for the R, you need a method then. Otherwise, it's hard to change inside yeah. is good. It's a go faster for sure, but it's still, it, and this, you can do the basic. Thing. And this, you can see what's going on. And yeah. if you see something like this, you realize that you have to fix something. Um, the R script, if something like this gets messed up and you don't notice it, you'll just have a wrong, you're, you'll have a file that's wrong. Um, and so you have to play pretty close attention with that stuff. So for the V lookup and the match, what are the difference? Um, v lookup will actually call out the information. Um, and so it'll output this um into a, the cell match only gives you the position um and so like when i did the match can that match a red no only one um, it gives me 124 um which means the position at Let's here. I'll undo the sorting. Previously, when I did the match, we got the 936. And if you remember, that's the same number that we had when we started out, uh, because that was the order of that in the file.call file. I don't like to go directly from this 936 to getting the names um, in case there's some um, markers that got removed when we were removing removing informative markers in the file.call stuff. Um, I don't like to go straight through that because it's easy um, it's easy for the order to be a little wrong. Uh, but that's the difference between the match. The match gives us this number that is the position and then this is useful to sort the data with uh, whereas the V lookup would just give us the name from the second or third or fourth or whatever column that you would so yeah, I use them in different um, different purposes. Yeah, I was just trying this the match second um, to see if that would work uh, since the VLOOKUP was having issues. But uh, any more questions? I don't know how to ask a question. <laughs> I'm with you. Okay. I don't know. I don't, I don't have 